Welcome or welcome back to Men Timeline. Thank you for finding your way to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the mental timeline of Shane Walsh from AMC's The Walking Dead. We first meet Shane in the passenger seat of main character Rick Grimes' cop cruiser pre-apocalypse. We see he is charismatic, understanding, and youthfully wise. Rick lags behind in the conversation about Shane's past relationships, which Shane jokingly tells were riddled with closed-minded moments and uncontrollable habits from his partners. The analogy that he uses to make these jokes about women is a light switch that subjects never know how to turn off. The fact that he is single speaks to the fact that he doesn't wish to associate with helpless people, and hearing the way he speaks of them, we can assume that he himself would not want to be mentally uncontrollable. This sentiment will be a major part of our analysis of Shane, as the switch that he mentally operates can definitely be called into question throughout the course of the show. As it's obviously implied by the same outfit and position in the car, Shane is also a cop and is Rick's partner. Both of them are deputies of Kings County Sheriff's Department. To even be sitting here, we know that Shane has likely had at least one mental screening by Kings County as standard procedure for law enforcement work, has had a high school diploma or GED, is required to stay vigilant no matter the circumstance, and generally should be mentally healthy. Before a criminal escape turned shootout would occupy our sheriffs, Shane displays an ability to persuade people when he comments on Rick's hesitation and urges him to talk. Rick begins to tell him about his marital issues and the unexplained attitude that his wife Lori displays toward him. The tendencies that he shows are that of a good person, as he does not proceed without sympathy, nor does he say anything uneducated as someone who is not romantically committed in any way. Good listening skills are not something we continue to speak about when exploring Shane's psychological depth. But as for now, Shane appears to be a good sane person based on what we can deduce from this introduction. We're now going to make a list of capabilities that Shane possesses shown to us by this first scene. 1. Shane is capable of realizing that he does not control the world or people around him. 2. Shane has personally established that he is capable of leaving helpless or uncontrollable people behind. We know this from his comments about past relationships. And three, Shane is capable of not having the answers. This one will be extremely important. And finally, let's establish one general idea. One, the preservation of humanity is priority number one in the zombie apocalypse. This is something that all main characters agree on, but achieve in different ways, which will cause conflict. I know it seems early to make concrete deductions such as these, but we are being introduced to a developed adult character who has lived the life of Shane all the way up until the point we meet him. The content we digest concerning him, even from the very beginning, is a direct representation of the values, lessons, and morals he carries. The shot capturing the manner in which they receive the radio announcement and pull off indicates that even before we see a zombie, danger can be sudden and lurking. They move with purpose and after arriving to the roadblock, prepare with purpose. What's on the way is immediate unknown danger, which Rick understands and is the reason he recommends refocusing to another sheriff who is excited for what this criminal stop will do for his reputation and fame. Shane plays into the other sheriff's banter and suggests it'd be cool to be on TV, subtly implying that things will be the same or even better after this chase. We're getting ever close to the apocalypse. Bad guys are in sight, and after they tip over their car, the escapees come out guns brandished. This is now a life or death situation. We are now seeing the first time that Shane is in fear. If you pull out on the cops, they're going to shoot you. And as the shootout ensues, Rick gets hit in the body and is on the ground, which Shane directly sees take place. According to what he would say when we find out Rick is fine, this scared the hell out of Shane, who responded by going haywire on the guy who shot Rick as he should have. Now, what could I possibly have to say about Shane doing exactly what he should have? Well, it's this. This is our clear indication that even pre-apocalypse, the most drastic solution should be for the most drastic problems. Extreme response should be warranted by extreme circumstances. Especially when the responses are a reflection of more than just yourself, which I bring up because Shane will be the leader of a group consisting of roughly nine men, five women, and four children. The final straggling escapee crawls from behind the wreckage and shoots Rick in the body where his vest does not cover, and begins to lose a heavy amount of blood. This would send Rick into a coma, and his hospital bed is where he would reside as the world changed forever. Zombie time! The next few episodes are narratively driven by Rick and follow his journey to find his family. We will be going ahead in time and dissecting the details we can to establish Shane's mental state before Rick shows up. After the events of Kings County's Day Zero, Shane barricades Rick inside the same hospital room that he is being treated for his gunshot wound, indicating that from the very beginning, Shane was very protective and tactical. We know he barricaded Rick in the room very early on because we see the carnage that he saved Rick from when Rick emerges from the hospital room. Shane saved Rick from more than just death. He saved Rick from literal hell. Many people argue that Shane could have made Rick's circumstances better by bringing his body with him, but everything that we see Shane do before barricading Rick inside the room 
is a sign that he is really trying to help Rick. Shane is not here to die for Rick, and the conclusion he draws is that he cannot take Rick with him. Just think for a second that the army is killing civilians, likely because anyone in a hospital is far more likely to be infected than anyone else, and if Shane grabs Rick, he is slowing both of them down. He cannot move Rick and the equipment keeping him alive. We also see that the army presence was far greater than the few infantrymen who were ambushed by walkers when Shane was barricading Rick. I do believe Shane showed up to save Rick but couldn't save him in the way that he planned, so he improvised in an extremely impressive way which boasts his survivalist instinct. He balanced a life or death situation for himself while trying to save his friend who likely would only raise his chances of dying. We honestly get no indication that Rick's circumstances would have been better had Shane taken him anyways. Let's move on from that tangent. Shane goes on to save Rick's family and meets Carl and Lori, vowing to keep them safe and at this point Shane knows that what he did at the hospital helped Rick, but will never know Rick's state unless he saw him again. Shane tells the family that Rick is dead. He deduced this by listening for a heartbeat with his ear which is not the most effective way of checking for signs of life. Shane likely does not relay that Rick is alive, one, because he doesn't know, and two, because Carl and Lori would not leave for what was established to be the safest place at the time, Atlanta, along with Shane. Some viewers have stated that this action proves Shane wanted to steal Rick's family all along, but this premature statement was for the absolute safety of the two people he is now responsible for protecting. But it doesn't make it right. Lori admits that at this time, if she knew Rick was alive, she would not have left, but also admitted that they likely would have died if that were the case. If Shane 100% believed Rick was dead, there shouldn't have been any present regret for leaving him, but we do see it. So I do not believe that Shane thought Rick was dead when he left the hospital room barricaded. Prematurely reporting death is something that gets touchy in our world as we speak, so Shane is responsible for any feelings that Lori and Carl have about that false report. It should be said that Rick's situation is one of the craziest and unfortunate situations given what takes place while he's asleep, but that crazy description is something that the family deserves to hear down to every single last detail, not just Rick is dead. Shane is proving that he may cross moral lines to ensure safety. The honesty of Rick's condition affects his ability to protect Lori and Carl, because the information he has would spawn new circumstances, a choice of staying that he doesn't agree with. His decision to withhold information diminished Lori and Carl's freedom to promote their safety. Remember, Shane was capable of not controlling the people and world around him, but withholding necessary information from those who only have you as a reference is controlling the situation. Shane would go on to become very attached to them both, romantically engaging with Lori and feeling responsible for Carl's development. The relationship that Lori and Shane would go on to have would be detrimental to Shane's psyche, which we could already know within the first episode. How? Well, let's go back to one of the things we established about Shane. Shane has already disliked and had trouble with uncontrollable women, which Rick explained to him in the very first scene describes Lori. The safety and protection of the two is a necessity in his mind, but Shane is actively choosing affection with Lori, who Rick established has been guilty of not putting Carl's well-being first by insinuating that his father, Rick, doesn't care about them. Sane good women do not do this. And we even get a scene very early on of Shane reminding Lori that Carl's development is heavily dependent on how she handles things when she handles not getting her way poorly. It likely was not hard for Shane to get close to Lori as they traveled to Atlanta. They are already familiar with each other and hung out as young adults, and Shane had done things like housework for the Grimes family. The loss of her thought to be dead husband also began to settle and become acceptable as her mind was constantly on edge pondering death and the risk of having a borderline toddler at her hip. Shane had been taking care of them with no second thought nor thanks for weeks. The three befriend Carol and her family shortly before setting up a survivor camp on the outskirts of the overrun city. Nearly 20 people of all different ages, backgrounds, and ethnicities. He uses Radiocom to help the survivors near or in Atlanta to find shelter and safety with them. We never see him assume leadership, but his tactical and cunning nature are likely what saw him fall into the leader role. He is regularly sending characters like Glenn and Andrea on supply runs and sending Daryl to hunt. Guns are prominently around in the camp, as well as motor vehicles. They do not attract attention and bury their dead. Now if this sounds like an effective system, that's because it is. At this point, no one has lost their life with Shane as leader. Most times, saving two people does not make you qualified to save a village. But this is a task that Shane is doing. And these aren't soldiers that he's helping to survive. Some are racists, some are narcissists, some are frail, and almost all are scared but find comfort in his leadership. Remember that this is the same person that had nothing worth standing by or for other than his friends and his badge pre-apocalypse. Many of us know what it's like to get a taste of something. We want the whole meal and want it to ourselves. Shane enjoyed this position as leader as much as one could enjoy these risky circumstances. Before Rick arrives, we see him smile far more than frown, and we see him upbeat far more than suppressing or concealing emotion. 
that's going to do it for part one. Make sure you check the channel back for part two. Make sure you leave feedback in the comment section as well and go ahead and drop a like on the video. Thank you.